So I haven't watched the Resident Evil series on Netflix, but I definitely, definitely do know about it. Although, having said that, what I know about it is, well, okay, so until a couple of weeks ago, I didn't know what the Resident Evil series on Netflix actually was. So I didn't know if it was an adaptation of one or more of the video games, or if it was a remake of one or more of the films. I didn't know if it was a prequel or a sequel or an entirely new story with entirely new characters. I didn't even know if it would feature some of my favourite and most beloved Resident Evil characters. Characters like Barry Burton. Sorry, who's Barry Burton? That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. What I did know is what I will be referring to in this video as the scene. Or, or rather it's a 30 second or so sequence from the scene. So if you move in certain internet circles, maybe because you apparently hate yourself and for various reasons keep watching angry nerds on YouTube complain about women, then you've likely come across the scene. It has been shared and watched and talked about millions of times on YouTube predominantly, but for our purposes more significantly on TikTok, all for the crime of being, as the kids might say, cringe. Okay, so because I'm old and I refuse to play anything but the original Resident Evil 1 and 2 on the original PlayStation, no remakes, thank you very much, I don't actually know if the kids still say cringe or if by saying cringe I am myself ironically now cringe. But if you haven't come across it, then right now you're probably asking yourself, what is the scene? Okay. But I'm glad you asked. No, he'll... So in the scene, this character, Evelyn, suddenly and apparently inexplicably breaks into a roughly 30 second song and dance number to Dua Lipa's Don't Start Now. Me, baby. That's it. That's what I know about Resident Evil on Netflix. Or rather, it's what I knew the first time I watched this. Now, you'll most often see this shared without context, particularly on TikTok, with nothing before, nothing after to explain what it even is or why this even exists. It's just this very strange, very bizarre thing that seems completely and totally out of place in an otherwise very, 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 very serious franchise. I don't want to get all conspiracy theorist, but out of context, the scene does feel very, um, very calculated, somehow dishonest. And by this, I mean the, if you were to ask an algorithm to generate the scene, I don't think it could do a better job of pitching it to TikTok. For one thing, it's a song and dance number, and TikTok loves both dances and songs, particularly songs from best-selling young popular female artists. It is pretty much the perfect average length for a TikTok video. It's even got YouTuber face. In other words, it all feels perfectly calibrated to drawing people in, namely idiots like me, and making them say, what the fuck? See? And okay, so yes, I did actually look it up just to be sure. And so I do know the context for it now and that it's to do with mind control, that it's a big plot twist or reveal, something like that. But that doesn't explain why that is the form that the writers and the showrunners thought would best communicate that whole fact. I mean, what were the showrunners even thinking? Yeah, the Ex Machina thing is interesting because she's kind of a bit of a robot herself and that was something we talked about. And then sometimes you just want to do weird stuff. When you're working on a longer order show, you can do a weird episode. You can take one of your 22 episodes and just say, screw it, we're going to do something weird. And we did that a ton on Supernatural. In an eight episode show, you can't get away with an episode like that, but you can get away with moments. And I also think for the audience, it keeps people on their toes a little bit because you're not expecting that. The more we can throw in things like that and surprise the audience, the better. Oh. So this all made me wonder, was this scene made for TikTok? Was it made deliberately to be shared millions of times on a social media platform by people who would be all too willing to share it for free because of the cringe? Is the cringe deliberate? Well, no, because Netflix's current attitude to TikTok is 
Eh? Which is a problem for Netflix because streaming companies are under direct threat from TikTok. TikTok has actually emerged as a very real competitor for people's attention. And this is unfortunate for streaming services because going viral on TikTok is now also very much a thing that companies and brands are expected to aspire to. This is what's happening in the music industry. Singers and musicians, particularly young female singers and musicians, have reported that they are now being pressured by record companies to make TikTok friendly music. That record companies want music which will appeal directly to the TikTok algorithm. So is it a step too far to assume that streaming platforms will follow suit? That those platforms are actually already making scenes and content designed to go viral on TikTok? Well, no, because again, Netflix's attitude towards TikTok is eh. So in a Vox article from June this year, Peter Kafka reports that streaming platforms attitude to TikTok is to treat it as a fad and hope that it will just die out. But Given that TikTok is here to stay, at least for the foreseeable future, is it possible that just two months after this article, Netflix has already changed its attitude and its strategy towards TikTok? Well, Resident Evil was released on 14th of July, and that's less than a month after the Vox article. So unless Resident Evil was scripted, cast, filmed, edited, and released in three weeks, it wasn't, then the answer is, no, obviously Netflix's attitude to TikTok has not changed, but that's not to say that Netflix and other streaming providers are entirely unaware of TikTok's appeal. Several books have been adapted, are in the process of being adapted, or have been bought for adaptation precisely because of their TikTok popularity. Netflix does have a presence on TikTok, but its official channel consists mainly of clips and trailers, which have been largely, if not entirely, repurposed from other platforms and put on TikTok because Netflix feels like it should put something on TikTok. All of which I'm sure you agree is very interesting. No. But it still leaves the question, what is going on with the scene? I still don't care. Well, it turns out that it has something to do with Netflix's general social media policy, which, as Jeff Beer explains in a Fast Company article from February 2019, is based around generating memeable content and then engaging with that content from the perspective of a Netflix superfan. So in 2019, for example, the company capitalized on the popularity of post-apocalyptic horror thriller Bird Box and all of the subsequent Bird Box memes, particularly the fan-driven Bird Box challenge in which people filmed themselves carrying out everyday tasks while blindfolded. This incidentally turned out about as well as you would expect. One Utah teen attempting to do the challenge while driving with her hat over her head. She swerved into another lane, crashing into a car. She could face reckless driving charges. So Beer explains how the company uses its social and brand editorial department as the engine that keeps Netflix shows and movies at the forefront of the pop culture conversation by imbuing its social platforms with the personality of a meme-happy fan who lives for TV and movies, Netflix's approach goes beyond mere promotion and collaboration. So this manifests itself in a lot of different ways, but an obvious one is meme templates, such as in this tweet of Jake Gyllenhaal's facial expressions from Velvet Buzzsaw. Here's another more recent meme template from The Grey Man, which you're invited to share and adapt for your own purposes. Netflix is also very active in jumping on trends among fans. To stay effective, the social teams need to be watching and listening in the right places at the right times so they can tap into real-time conversations that yield results, like a video of awkward silences for the show You, or responding to fans who think the Lost in Space robot is hot. And in this same article, analyst Rich Greenfield adds, Netflix is able to put stuff out there, see what bubbles up, and then they can amplify it based on the response. Now, none of this is to say that the Resident Evil dance scene was therefore algorithmically generated, at least not in terms of TikTok, but it was designed to generate the sort of real life pop culture conversations that Netflix and other streaming services have traditionally relied on. 
You're supposed to watch the scene and go, what the fuck? And then go off and urge other people to watch the scene so that they in turn go off and watch it and propagate the cycle. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Of course, that's not how it's worked out for Resident Evil and in particular the scene. While Netflix executives and showrunners were all too aware of the scene's potential to go viral, when it did, it wasn't in a way that Netflix could market. The show's just performed too poorly, it's reviewed too badly among viewers, and the song and dance scene has become the most obvious visual indicator of what viewers think of the whole thing. It has, in essence, just become a stick to beat the show with. How would Netflix even begin to engage with that pop culture conversation in a peppy, super fan kind of way without just pissing fans off or without appearing dishonest or rude or inauthentic or even cringe? In response, the Netflix strategy has been to just to maintain radio silence. It has basically given up promoting Resident Evil in favour of other more high profile shows like Stranger Things or the upcoming Sandman adaptation. That's why there was a spike in promotional activity in the run up to Resident Evil's release. Although let's be honest, they likely blew their entire marketing budget on this 3D billboard. And that then died out almost immediately after the show came out and audiences were less than impressed. I made the decision to watch this show even knowing it would probably suck shit. And suck shit it did. So if you can help it, don't waste your time watching Resident Evil. But I legitimately do believe this is the worst video game adaptation of all time. Resident Evil is terrible. There is of course nothing on official Netflix channels about the song and dance scene, or at least nothing that I could find. So this means at the least uh, if something was there, it's likely just been removed. Netflix hasn't even tried to save face and market the cringe the way other companies have tried to save face by marketing their own cringe. You know, like that time the Cats actors threw the Cats VFX artists under the bus. As cast members of the motion picture Cats, <laughs> nobody more than us understands the importance of good, good visual, visual effects. effects. Or that other time take a wee titi through the Thor Love and Thunder VFX artists under the bus. Okay. Does that look real? In that particular shot, no, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really, right? When you look close. And then of course there was that really funny time when Sony tried to so bad it's good Morbius because of the memes. It's a superhero film that's been the topic of thousands of internet memes in recent weeks. Now Sony Pictures made a huge mistake because they thought that their film was actually getting uh, positive attention online when in reality the memes were not meant to laugh along with the movie, it's to laugh at the movie. And so Sony Pictures decided to re-release it and it did not play out so, so well for them. In other words, outside of one scene, Resident Evil's not even so bad it's good, it's just bad. But the fact that the scene went viral on TikTok will not have gone unnoticed. So for a company hemorrhaging subscribers the way Netflix currently is, and which so far has been unable to get a handle on TikTok, or even to understand that TikTok is both a threat and a marketing tool, it's fair to say that Netflix executives will be crunching the engagement numbers as we speak. That they will be looking very closely at how fans have engaged with the scene and looking closely at exactly why and how it went viral on TikTok. So I'm gonna make a prediction here, or, not a prediction as such, more just a, I'm going to offer a small vision, a small glimpse of a possible future. Because if this happens again, if Netflix scenes suddenly start to go viral on TikTok on a regular basis, I'm willing to bet that it won't be an accident. I'm in fact willing to bet that next time it won't be the fans sharing the viral content, but that it will be coming out of Netflix's official TikTok channel itself. Just watch this space is all I'm saying. Oh, and keep an eye out on HBO and Amazon and Sky and Hulu and Disney, definitely Disney, Apple, maybe even the BBC, probably ITV, in fact, almost definitely ITV. Um, what else? Channel 4, I guess, BBC 2. Um, is Channel 5 still a thing? I don't actually know. Um, that's, those, um, those are all the 
TV channels I can think of. Um, guess that's it.